good, everybody? Welcome back to Danganronpa Trigger Happy Havoc. We're in the middle of a trial. Uh, it's me, Chris of Color. This is Lizzie. We're doing things. Hi. Uh, we're on different channels. Just check it out. Quick, pick something. Quick. Thank God. Me and Sayaka were the only ones who ever knew about us switching rooms. So the only other person besides me who would even know to switch the nameplates was Sayaka. Yep. Yep. So this is uh, my channel, um, episode 13. Uh, if you're wondering what we're doing. Uh, we're in go... the middle of a trial. Yes. We're That'll in the start middle... on my channel. Go ahead and subscribe to Lizzie Nopo so you don't miss that out. And subscribe to me while you're here. And that way you... you don't miss with anything. Well, don't you don't miss anything that's going on. Yeah, and if you haven't watched the beginning of the trial that was on my channel, please go do that now and before you start this episode. Because, honestly, you're just going to be really lost at this point. There, there was a lot of stuff unveiled in the last episode. And more stuff's going to be unveiled in this episode. But it won't make up for not knowing what happened in the last episode. Exactly. So... So on and so forth. Let's well, continue. You can also infer as much from her note. Something so I want to talk to you about. Just us two. In five minutes, come see me in my room. Check the nameplate to make sure you don't get the wrong room, okay? She specifically tells the reader to check the nameplate. She would only have written that if she knew the nameplates had been switched. But why would she switch them in the first place? She wanted someone to come to the room she was in, and also hide the fact that it was Makoto's room. What? Inviting someone to your room, but not telling them you'd switched rooms. Why would anyone do that? That's a good question. To understand that, we first need to understand Mom, are you what cool? after she invited the person into the room. Like, he really does just look angry. Just look at those teeth. Mm -hmm. That's where the answer lies. That was some good corn eating what teeth, my friend. Then was whoever she invited ah. over came in and attacked her. We figured it out. We know who did it. Whoever she invited over is the culprit. We don't know who that is, though, Taka. But we still don't know who it is, you goddamn idiot. Thank you for reading that much more eloquently, Mondo, and much more accurately. Yeah, glad you've calmed down. Fought with her killer there in the room, yes? Perhaps the answer to our previous question lies in that initial struggle. Yes, I think you're right. Then... We just have to figure out what happened during the fight, right? That reminds me. There was a replica sword at the murder scene. Was that perhaps used during the fight? Oh yeah. What's the deal with that sword? Oh, I stole it. Sayaka suggested I should hold on to it. I thought it might come in handy if I had to defend myself. It seems pretty likely that the killer used it to break Sayaka's right wrist. How the hell could you possibly know that's what broke her wrist? Because it's all glittery, and I doubt she put eyeshadow on it. The reason I know Sayaka's wrist was broken with a fake sword is because... When you look at it, her wrist, then there's no doubt. There's... No, no! I got it! All you have to do is take a good look at her broken wrist, and it should become pretty clear. It's glittery! Right there. All that glitters is gold. Swollen. There's something glittery there. See? Is, is that gold? Now's not the time to be gold digging, Chihiro. We're rich! It sure is. Specifically, the gold coating from the replica sword. You barely have to touch that stuff, and it'll stick right to you. And there's some on her wrist because... I got her! Because she got hit with the sword! Right there on her wrist! Yes, thank you, Taka. I see, I see. And so the truth draws ever closer. Alright, then it's about time to solve this mystery. What happened in my room? And what led to Sayaka's death? That's what we need to make clear. There's a bit more to learn about non-stop debates. Would you like to hear more? Absolutely. Because I'm playing this, and I need to know everything. <clears throat> Are you getting used to these non-stop debates? Uh, I thought I had enough of them last year, but... <laughs> Starting with the next debate, I'll start... <laughs> that was really good. I'll start loading multiple truth bullets into your truth cylinder. But just like with the weak spots, only one of those bullets can actually refute the proper statement. In other words, from here on out, you'll have to combine the right truth bullets with the right weak spots to refute each statement. If you come up with the wrong combination, you'll take damage to your influence gauge. Okay. You can press the Q key to rotate the cylinder and choose which bullet to fire. And I can listen to them multiple times over, so it's not like I have to really rotate the cylinder too much, exactly, right? Exactly, yeah. Okay. Press and release the Q key to cycle through each bullet. Or you can use the mouse wheel. Oh god, I'm gonna hit by accident. 
By the way, if the logic set difficulty is set to kind, which it is, fewer bullets will be loaded into the cylinder. For our purposes this time, the logic difficulty will be set to mean. Well then, good luck and have fun! Bye! Why? We expressly picked kind! Replica sword sheath, catch a knife set, replica sword. When the fighting broke out, the culprit grabbed the sword, and that's when the first blow was dealt. A sword-based sneak attack! And that's what broke Miss Maizono's wrist! So, she tried to fight back. She grabbed the kitchen knife she had hidden away. But then the culprit took that from her, too. And they killed her with it. And that's exactly what happened. Hmm. The person with the sword really did attack first. There's no explanation for how a certain part of the sword got damaged. That would be the sheath, right? Yes. The culprit grabbed the sword, and that's when the first blow was dealt. The sword-based sneak attack. This one right here. No, it's wrong. Because remember, there were scratches on the sheath. Yeah. Actually, no. I don't think the fight started with the sword. Why not? Because the sword sheath had been scratched. See? There's a gash in it. Like someone cut into it with something sharp. Something sharp? You mean like the kitchen knife? That was the only sharp thing found at the scene. Was the sword not sharp? Stop jumping ahead. Slow down and explain it so I get what the hell's going on. I'm sorry, Mondo. If the Thank you for being the audience first, surrogate. There wouldn't be any explanation for the scratch on the sheath. If you are going to attack with the sword, you'd take it out of the sheath first, right? That's true. With the sheath on, it'd be heavy and bulky and useless as shit. Very eloquent. Thank you. Okay, so how did the sheath get damaged? With the knife! If they got attacked with the kitchen knife, maybe they grabbed the sword as a defensive impulse. In that situation, there wouldn't be any time to actually unsheath the sword. So you're saying the sword was initially used to defend against an attack from the knife? Which means whoever had the kitchen knife was the one who attacked first. I think I get it. So here's how it all played out. The culprit came in, found the kitchen knife hidden there somewhere, then they took the knife and attacked Sayaka before she knew what was happening. So she grabbed the sword to defend herself. But then the culprit took that from her, too. I have an idea of something that might possibly be happening. Then, mm -hmm. after they broke her wrist with a the sword, they took the knife and finished it. Sorry, but I don't think Sayaka used the sword to defend herself. What? How the hell can you not think that? Because she never held the sword at all. There's a certain part of her body that makes this clear. Part of her body that shows she never used the sword. Why not, got it? If you wanted to use the sword, which part of your body would have to touch it? Her palms. Her stomach. <laughs> You're I mean, talking about her palms. Right? Hifumi could probably attack someone with a sword using his stomach. <laughs> the palms of her hands Here I come! Oh god. So I don't think she ever picked up the sword. Yeah. How can you know that just by looking at her palms? Have you not been listening, baby girl? Like I said before, the gold coating on that sword comes right off. All you have to do is touch it. In fact, if you look, you'll notice that a lot of the gold has already come off the handle. It's safe to assume that's because whoever used the sword got some of it on their hands. There's really no way she could have picked it up and come away completely clean. Maybe she washed her hands after she escaped into the bathroom. Yes, because that's the first thing I'm thinking of whenever I'm getting attacked and someone's trying to break into my bathroom. Sorry, my hands are dirty. But I don't think so. Why do you say that? Is it because you think I'm ugly? Yeah. That's it. No, that's not it at all. Don't lie to her, Makoto. There's no way Sayaka washed the gold coating off her hands because... So there's a certain regulation that talks about what happens to a bathroom at nighttime. <laughs> she was afraid of water. <laughs> the water was off. I don't get this food all wet. According to the Monokuma file, Sayaka's time of death was around 1.30 a.m. In other words, at nighttime. 
and the water in the bathroom shuts off at night time, right? Yep. Oh, I didn't know that. Actually, I haven't taken a shower yet. Been... You ain't ugly, but you sure as hell stinky. It's been like four days, Toko. Like, Jesus Christ. Oh my. You don't get to say shit. You're no different. You smell like a big, fat, ugly donkey. Hmm? I'm not sure whether to take that as an insult or a compliment. I ship them. An insult, obviously. So anyway, That's a new one. If Sayaka never touched the sword, then that means the killer is the only one who used the sword. But hold on. If that's right, then the one who damaged the sheath with the kitchen knife was... Sayaka. It had to be Sayaka, right? Yep. When damaged the sheath would have had to been the one without the sword. Sayaka had the knife, but Sayaka. Oh Correct. Sayaka? She had the kitchen knife? I feel like she tried to kill someone. I feel like she tried to lure someone in to kill him, and then it backfired on her. But we already said that the attack started with... The person with the knife attacked first, and the sword was used as an impromptu defense. And the one who attacked first was... Sayaka? Now do you understand? She wasn't You're correct. a victim in this. Shit! No, now we're still gonna figure out who she was attacking. It's almost as if she'd been planning to commit a murder of her own. Plot what? twist. So yeah, Sakura technically was the first blackened in this killing game. But her plan, like you said, backfired. We still don't know who she was trying to attack. We gotta figure that out, Lizzie Nofo. I will! She took the knife from the kitchen, then invited the culprit to the room she was staying in. And if it's true that she had the kitchen knife and attacked without provocation... Indeed. These are all the actions of an assailant. Which brings up another point. Nakuto, Sayaka was the one who suggested... I love how she says their groups, names. Correct? Yeah, it, she, she has a really pretty pronunciation. Maybe the reason she wanted to switch rooms was so that she could pin the crime on you. That is a possibility, is it not? Ooh. Sayaka wanted to... on me? Oh boy! That would also explain why she would switch the nameplates. She wanted to get whoever she had targeted to come to Makoto's room where she was staying. And by committing the murder there, instead of her room, that would implicate Makoto. But for Makoto. that to work, the target had to be lured out while still keeping the room swap a secret. If the target knew she had switched rooms, they would have become suspicious right away. So all that's why she switched the names? But doesn't that plan seem a little risky? Everything about here is risky. For one thing, even if her plan worked, Mr. Naegi would just tell everyone they'd switched rooms. Not if she killed me next. I don't know. I'm not sure our soft-hearted Makoto is capable of that kind of cutthroat behavior. Hey! That's the most backhanded of backhanded combos I've ever gotten. I'm sure Sayaka realized the same thing, which is why out of all of us, she asked him to switch rooms. Ah, <sighs> uh, poor Makoto looks heartbroken. Plus, Ugh. she was the ultimate pop sensation. A totally forgettable kid. Or a national superstar. Who are you more likely to believe? Okay, that was uncalled for. Wait, then you're saying she had this all planned out? Holy shit! But in the end, her plan backfired. She launched her attack with the knife, then found herself under attack in turn. I can't believe I was actually smart for once. That must be when her you did it! You did great! And Yee. she was forced to drop the knife. The tables were suddenly turned on her, and she died at the hands of the one she'd planned to murder. Just hold on! That can't be true! Because... because... She was pretty! Hey! Hey! You guys have totally derailed the argument! Shut up, Double D! You're being super boring right now! Come on, hurry up and decide who did it! Come on! Like, there's a heartbroken kid! Everyone's insulting each other. This isn't boring in the slightest. It'd be awful if I had to punish you all just because you ran out of time. Oh yeah, we gotta decide who we think did it. Yeah. Makoto, 
Right now, you just need to concentrate on figuring out the answer to this mystery. If we can't uncover who murdered Sayaka, it's over for all of us. Is it really all over? Obviously, I'm committed to finding out who killed her, but what can I do? I mean, as far as clues go, there's nothing left. Or is there? Okay. <clears throat> A dying message. It's easy just to say, hey, decide who did it. But there just aren't any more clues, right? No, that's wrong. Dying message. Very good shot. There still might be one clue left. Sayaka's dying message. Dining? Wait, wh what did you say? Do you got food on your mind? Do we need to take a recess and go to the kitchen? The dying message. She wrote something on the wall behind her. Remember? One, one, zero, three, seven. Written in her own blood. There must be a clue about the killer hidden in there. Well, before we get too far into that, I need to ask, can we really be sure that Sayaka is the one who wrote it? There's no question that Sayaka wrote the message, and I can prove it. It was the left index finger, right? Yes. I got it. Her left index finger had blood on it. That could only be because she used that finger to write the message. I see. She broke her right wrist during the fight, so she'd have to use her left hand to write. I didn't even think about that part. Sure. Mm -hmm. I think we can all agree Sayaka wrote it. But still, what the heck do those numbers mean? One, one, zero, three, seven? Hey, Chihiro. Be the hero. You're a computer nerd or whatever, right? You should know all about numbers and shit. That's not very nice. N no, that's not... Yes, I'm a programmer, but I don't see... That's kind of how we talk to each other. Yeah. Even though that's how we have it written. Or how I designed it on the logo. <laughs> of course. It's because they're not numbers. Oh, yeah, it looks like... Huh? What? What? No, it's just a look at the numbers, assuming they're not numbers. Don't these first two, one one, look less like two numbers and more like one letter? Ah, oh, you're right. The connecting line is barely there, so I assumed it was one one, but looking at it now, you could also read it as an N. Whoa, you might have finally just said something worth a shit. Wow! <laughs> Damn, Mondo. Really getting excited now. Uh, the way. I mean, if that really is an N, N zero. No, 37. Doesn't make any more sense. No, 34 either. Damn it, it's no use. I just don't know. Rotate the image 180 degrees. So I guess huh? these are images that ring into the courtroom. Rotate, Rotate it. it. Oh my god. Now I see. She wrote down the killer's name. Do you get it? Huh? Not quite. You just shot past the clue part and right onto who did it. So, whose name did she write? Like, I kind of. Leon. Leon. I kind of had the right idea with the <laughs> seeing it from backwards, but yeah, I thought you were onto something when we first saw the numbers. This whole time, I've been like, do you not see that? Like I, I don't know what it was, but <laughs> it's Leon. Yeah, like I, I can see it now. Like it. <laughs> Why does that look so much like numbers? Her, ran her handwriting sucks. I don't care if she was almost dead. <laughs> her calligraphy was trash, so... Select I'll someone. Go left and right, and... Here's my answer. The key to solving this mystery was simply to rotate the writing a hundred... Don't take credit weeks. for Kyoko's discovery. Yeah. If you turn the message around... It becomes the letters. I wonder if anyone was L upset e that you took o so long to figure N. out that. Like, I had the general idea. Yeah. Keep in mind, guys, 
And yes, I am going to use this as an excuse. I have very, very severe ADHD. I can be onto something and still not fucking get it. <laughs> it and, happens a lot. Yeah, like, I... I have... As I said in the very beginning of the series, my head is permanently head empty, no thoughts. Except sometimes a thought does occasionally enter in there, and I don't follow it through. <laughs> to be fair, though, this is probably the only time in the series they s literally spell it out for you. Yeah. So but... they won't. No one else is gonna have. Oh, I'm sorry. But the webcam. <laughs> um. No one else. They won't do anything like this for the rest of them. Now, okay. from there on, I was like, you're gonna have to figure it out yourself. So they literally won't have the writing on the wall. Yeah, like, like I said, I had it figured out with, like, how she would write it. Yeah. You, yeah, you were onto something. I thought you were so close to doing it, but it was like, no. But yeah, it's Leon. Like, he's the one that I had no suspicion of. Like, he, if it weren't for, if it weren't for her spelling it out. Yeah. That would, that would have been, I would never have gotten it. L-E-O-N, or more accurately, Leon. What the hell are you talking about? It's just a coincidence. Uh-huh. It's just a bunch of random squiggles that happen to look like my name. Then you explain the what the numbers stand for. No, it's not random at all. Ooh. She wrote that message on the wall behind her as she was leaning up against it. And think about it now. He's one of the only people that would actually have the force with something that weird. To actually break a wrist. Yeah. Because he's a baseball player. In that position, she couldn't move to write normally, and had to write upside down, as it were. And as a result, when you look at it standing in front of her, it ends up getting flipped. Try it for yourself if you want. I'm ruining some good right food for this. Like her, they better the figure it out. <laughs> that, that sounds like one hell of a stretch to me. I'm the killer. You can't just go and say shit like that. You're the killer. If you're not the killer, then why did you try to destroy the evidence? Huh? Oh yeah. You know what I'm, I'm talking all this about, part. right, Makoto? The evidence Leon tried to get rid of. The evidence that Leon tried to get rid of. Is that what you said, Kyoko? It's the thing I found on the ground in front of the incinerator, right? Don't remember what that was. It was the. Shirt piece, right? Yep. And he's wearing a white shirt, so it fits. You mean if the shirt fits, the wear it. Sorry. As the killer stabbed Sayaka, they must have gotten some of her blood on them. And to dispose of the shirt covered in the victim's blood, they threw it into the incinerator. But one piece burned off and got left behind. Like, does he have, like, multiple different outfits or anything? And the killer didn't so. notice. If they had, they most certainly would have panicked. Isn't that right, Leon? But is one scrap of fabric enough to conclude that Leon is guilty? Yeah, I mean, Leon's not the only one wearing a white button-up. Why would you argue that? You're wearing a white button-up! That, that's right. There are plenty of other people here with shirts like mine. Yeah, but none of them have the safety pin. With just that one little chart right. piece, there's no way you can say for sure who it belongs to. You're right. That alone isn't enough. But there are some other points that may reveal the truth. Are you finally starting to understand? The answers to all the riddles are right here. Yeah, I think so. The, bur the burnt remains of the button-up shirt, which the killer wasn't able to get rid of. There's something about it we need to pay attention to in order to figure out who's responsible. Okay. So. So we know when it was disposed of. After 1.30, which was the time of the murder. And it was... We know where. So, it would be how it was disposed of. Because it was disposed of in the incinerator. I got it. Exactly, but how? Because remember, there's that gate. Mostly at how the shirt was disposed of. We should be able to figure out who the killer is. Oh, oh yeah, that's a good point. I, I think I know what you're gonna say. Yeah, it was you. You can't reach the incinerator without opening the gate in front of the trash room, right? And obviously, you wouldn't be able to hit the switch to turn it on either. He kind of looks like Leon has one of Celeste's curls on right now in the, in the left. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he he's a baseball uh, guy. He can he's throw a it. Baseball star. 
you need the key to get in. And the one with the key was the person on cleaning duty. So the killer had to be. He threw her for me. Interesting. No, that's wrong. There's another way to use the incinerator without being, a, being the one on cleaning duty. That's exactly what proves that Leon is the real killer. Someone faked their trash chute task. <laughs> the key to the trash room. Whoever was on cleaning duty must have had it, right? So no. the only one who could get to the incinerator was the person in charge of the trash? No. And you'd have to get close to the incinerator in order to destroy Man, the evidence. listen to all of them. Which means the only possible suspect is whoever had the trash room key. Probably doing that. Okay, so the person who would have had the trash room key, huh? Me? No! <laughs> There absolutely was a way to use the incinerator without using the trash room key. Because it'll turn on the incinerator by using something I found on the ground nearby. All this music. The key to the trash room. Whoever was on cleaning duty must have had it, right? So the only one who could get to the incinerator was the person in charge of the trash room. And you'd have to get close to the you incinerator don't have to. in order to destroy. No, that's wrong. Break. Yeah. Ugh, break. Hold on. I think I know how someone could dispose of the evidence without using the trash room key. And with the shattered thing, he could have wrapped it up. He could have wrapped it up in the ball and thrown it. Not quite. But that's a that's in the, in the well, other direction. Have, we'll figure it out. Yeah, it, it's right. But if you can't get past the gate, you couldn't possibly turn on the incinerator, could you? Yes, you could. If you use this. What is it? Some kind of glass ball? It's busted to hell. Hero, please don't start crying. Actually, it was supposed to be a crystal ball, but uh But <laughs> how would you use it? My baby! Well, I had to use the glass ball in a certain way, which was Divine with it. <laughs> I love that. Uh throw it? Mm -hmm. I got it! The killer simply took aim at the incinerator switch and threw the ball through a gap in the gate. All they had to do was hit that switch, and the incinerator would come to life. Someone threw that... threw a gap in the gate? And who has the best aim out of you everyone? Remember what you said before, he threw me? Huh? Someone turned the incinerator on! Very strange. I'm quite certain it was off last time I was down here. But perhaps it was the work of a fairy. Leon's certainly a fairy, all right. Fumi had the yeah. key, so the only way the incinerator could have been turned on without his knowledge was because the killer was able to hit the switch without opening the gate. Once they'd gotten the incinerator going, all they had to do was ball up the shirt and toss it in. Hey, come on! What the hell is this? All you that have to problem. do is look at the scene to know that the killer never actually went inside the trash room. The shards of broken glass, the incinerator left running, the piece of shirt that escaped the fire. If the killer had been on cleaning duty, the evidence would have been taken care of much more thoroughly. Yep. Wait, wait, no, just hold on. But the distance from the gate to the incinerator has to be at least 30 feet, right? Mm -hmm. The pinpoint yep. accuracy you'd need to throw a glass ball that far and hit something that small. Could someone really do that? That, that's right! There's no way! It'd be impossible! You're a baseballer! Difficult, absolutely. Impossible? I don't think so. Because the killer is... It wouldn't be much of a challenge at all for the killer because... Ultimate baseball star! I got it! As I've been because saying! the killer is the ultimate baseball star! Isn't that right, Leon? Do you, do you have any idea how stupid you sound right now? I don't want to hear nothing from you, Mr. Chin Piercing. A target 30 feet away would surely be little challenge for the ultimate baseball star. You, you, you can't be serious. I, I, yeah! I'm not the killer! God, fucking calm your spikes down. These goddamn shipper brains have got it all wrong, I'm telling you! You still won't admit it? 
Okay then, Makoto. Go ahead and review the incident one more time to make his crime perfectly clear. Do we really have to? And with that, we can end this. Yes, you do. Listen to me! What the hell do you mean, end this? Say what you want, Leon. But all the questions have been answered. And the truth has been revealed. Now here's what happened. The closing argument is about to begin. Would you like to hear more? Absolutely! Every case has one last element to bring this class trial to an end. This is the closing argument. In this phase, you'll give a complete summary of the case. You'll have to reproduce the flow of events for the case in the form of a comic book. However, you'll notice that in this comic, there are a number of pieces missing. It's up to you to complete the comic using the provided truth panels. Also, if you take aim at a missing section and press the left mouse button, holy cow, you'll get a hint that might lead to a breakthrough. Well then, good luck and have fun. Alright. I, I guess I'll get the hang of it. Yep. So it'd be the inviting in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a double drop. And then I think you just... Yeah. Like so. And then... That's the attacking, so... And then you have one more right here. And then you can use uh, use the mouse wheel to scroll. So you have more. It's kind of hard to tell with the stylization what's going on in these little bitty pixels. Okay, so this has the sword. Mm -hmm. And it's still in the sheath. Well, hang on. Go back. I think you have the mix, or swapped. Right. Because it looks like here they're backing into the, the sword. And then they're getting the, the sword right now. Okay. And then, whop! That's the end of the sword. Mm-hmm. So we're in the bathroom now. So it looks like the door's locked. They're going to force themselves in. And then... God, that fucking expression is horrifying. Mm-hmm. That expression is also horrifying. Okay, so this is... Mm -hmm. Writing, lint roll. Mm hmm. Now they're in the incinerator. Um. But the ball. Throw that. And then. It flies for a couple panels. Whee! It gets thrown in. And then. Yeet! There we go. I think we got everything. Here's exactly what happened. Reenact that boy. I think I'd better take one more look back at the case from the beginning. Last night, the killer went to the room Sayaka was in. In other words, my room. From what we can tell, Sayaka invited that person there intending to kill them. She attacked them with the knife she'd taken from the kitchen earlier. But then something happened that she wasn't prepared for. They grabbed the fake sword I put in my room and fought back. And she told us to keep that. That fucked up her plan entirely. Mm -hmm. During the struggle, a strike from the sword broke Sayaka's right wrist. Okay, you fucked and up. That's when she lost her grip on the kitchen knife. Finding herself cornered, Sayaka panicked and ran into the bathroom. The killer went after her, but couldn't get the bathroom door open. What they didn't know was that my bathroom door got stuck easily, and there was a trick to opening it. Sayaka knew about that because I told her, but of course the killer had no way of knowing. And so they tried to, they tried to open it. So instead, so the away. killer forced the door open, took the kitchen knife, and stabbed Sayaka. But with what strength she had remained, Sayaka left a dying message. To keep the killer from noticing, she wrote it on the wall behind her. This, this is horrifying. That, all her strength was gone. Mm -hmm. Like th this art style is just horrifying. With Sayaka dead, 
The killer quickly began destroying the evidence. Yeah, it makes sense that he'd... They took off their shirt, which was covered in their victim's blood. It makes sense that he'd do the lint rolling because his hair is so bright. But yeah, that'd be the most colorful roll of lint ever if he used it in the school. They wanted to make sure they got rid of any trace they'd ever been there. Which is smart, but then they left the sword. Afterwards, yeah. the killer headed to the and trash there's room all those to destroy the marks everywhere. Shirt. They tried to burn the shirt using the incinerator there, but the trash room was blocked off by an especially sturdy gate, preventing access to the incinerator. So what about the little Monokuma that gets in the way? Did he have to do this during the no 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 spiel? Hmm. That's a good point too. So they came up with a plan to use heroes. Well, I think Monokuma would want the, the, the murder room. to continue. He doesn't want them to um he has to interfere. Yeah. Because he's getting what he wants, but the murder taking place, no. Yeah. yeah. That makes sense. The killer managed to throw the ball through the gap in the gate and hit the incinerator switch. For any normal person, that'd be an impossible throw. But the killer had the confidence to take a shot. And that's because the killer was the ultimate baseball star. The crystal ball. This is cool. With absolute precision. Hit the switch on the incinerator, which then quickly roared to life. Whoosh. Oing. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you correct my sound effects. Having destroyed the final piece of evidence, they left the area with I imagine a sign of relief, but there was one thing they missed. Fish. Part of the shirt they <laughs> Sorry, I, I like making fun of some things like that. And fell Kirk. The incinerator. Like what? Why? Why would the shirt make this Kirk sound effect? It's letting you know its favorite Star Trek captain. <laughs> the killer didn't notice this, and so left behind a piece of indisputable evidence. Boom. Isn't that right, Leon? Yes! It would appear that Hero simply forgot his crystal ball in the laundry room. You went there to try and wash the blood out of your shirt. And that's where you saw it, right? Seeing the ball, you thought of a way to take care of everything. So, Leon, do you object to anything that's been said? Do I object? Hell yes, I object! Of course I do! I object! I object! I object! To what part? I mean, all of this is just a bunch of stupid theories! You need evidence! Where's the evidence? This also sounds like last year. Oh like, my god. God, he's so shaky. Without evidence, it's all bullshit. It's bullshit and I refuse to acknowledge it! We have all the evidence. You don't... You don't have to acknowledge it. You're not voting. Exactly. Well, then, well he is voting. I guess this is as good a time Everyone as any votes. to present the evidence that proves you did it. Well, your vote doesn't matter. <laughs> Makoto. Pretty one side in this one. You're in possession of that evidence. I have the evidence. Your full your first bullet time battle is about to begin. Would you like to hear more? Absolutely. Sometimes during a class trial, your opponent simply won't want to hear what you have to say. When this happens, you will engage him in a head-to-head -head battle. His fists against yours. Oh god, his fists are so big, though. And all we, his teeth. Yeah, we would like to refer to this as the bullet time battle, a.k.a. the BTB, BTW. Shut up, tutorial. During the BTB, you want to destroy your opponent's statements in time with the rhythm. It's a rhythm game. Yay! Match your button presses with each tempo marker as they move across the screen and reach the center. Do I have to shoot, like, specific ones or just any of them? Uh, any of them. Just do it in time. Okay. Press the right mouse button to lock onto an opponent's statement. Destroy the statement to lock onto with the left mouse button as the tempo marker reaches the center. So kind of keep it in time. Okay. So I with the left mouse button. As the tempo marker, was it the right button that I had to press in the tempo, or yeah. just the uh, right mouse button to aim, and left mouse button, or, or sorry, right mouse to lock on, and left mouse button, you shoot it as the tempo marker reaches the center. Okay. Got a thought. Use method to deal damage to your opponent. If you can't pull it off, you'll be the one in pain. 
Do this consecutively and you'll start a combo. Keep his going and you'll get initiate a tempo up. On the flip side, if you keep missing, you'll get into a tempo down situation. When the tempo changes, so does the timing for hitting each button. Okay. So watch out for that. Deal enough damage to your opponent and their weak spot statement will appear. At this point, you can press the left mouse button to shoot down with a truth bullet like any other statement. Refute their statements fast enough and you'll come out victorious. But just like before, if your influence gauge reaches zero or you run out of time, you fail. Good luck and have fun. Oh boy. Rhythm games always sound so... The it's a lot to take in. They didn't use anything from your room to do it. Instead, they must have used something that belonged to them. His toolkit! Something to remove, uh, something of their own to remove the screws, but could it have been? to acknowledge you. You're stupid. Stupid, stupid, stupid. God, this is what it's like arguing with my brother. Stupid, <laughs> stupid, 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 stupid. Yeah. I have to show indisputable evidence that Leon is the killer. I need to figure it out. All right, bullet time battle. You got this. I'm gonna this for you. Where's your proof? Keep going. Yes. Not a chance. It wasn't me. Stupid. You lied. Stop talking. Shut up. Where's your proof? You kidding me? The audio captures went crazy. Not a chance. Stupid. You lied. You're doing alright, actually. Where's your proof? There we go. Where's your proof? That's, that's confusing. This should prove it. No, yeah, you did fine. It's the first one. It's not that hard. And again, this is gentle mode, so it will only get harder on the other the settings. Screws on the bathroom doorknob were removed. Like usually, I'm good at rhythm stuff, but that one was like, kind of confusing. It's one of those things I'm gonna have to practice. I yeah. wonder what kind of tool the killer used to remove them. I mean, it had to be a screwdriver, right? Oh well, yeah. I'm pretty sure the tool kits we got each had one inside. That must be what he used. There aren't any other tools anywhere. Yes. But the tool kit in my room had clearly never been used. That's because the culprit didn't know it was your room. They thought they were in Sayaka's room. Only the boys got tool kits. So the killer naturally assumed there wouldn't be one in there. Okay, then whose toolkit did the killer use? Stupid, stupid, stupid! Shut up! It had to be their very own toolkit. Stupid, 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 stupid! Shut up! Leon, would you mind showing us your toolkit? If I'm right about this, then the screwdriver will show some evidence of being used. Stupid, stupid, stupid! Huh? And if you say you used it for something else, you'll have to explain exactly when, where, and why. And let me say this right now. I lost it isn't an excuse at this point. Stupid. Stupid. Why you gotta, why you gotta be so mean to Stu like that? God, that was horrifying. So, you have no rebuttal? Then it would seem we are finished here. Get your screen painting ass out of here. Jesus Christ. We did it! Yay! Oh, there was a 666 there. Hooray, you got an A! Yay! Got 60 points for the mono the mono mono machine. <laughs> Yay! Looks All like right. you've reached your verdict. Then are we ready to cast our votes? Is it time for our first execution? You all have a lever in front of you. Use it to make your selection. Oh, just to remind you all, make triple sure you vote for someone. You wouldn't want to be punished for something so minor, right? Okay, then let's get excited! We didn't Who even say anything. chosen as the blackened? Will you make the right choice or the dreadfully wrong one? What's it gonna be? What's it gonna be? I want to tape over the other side of his face. Just so he always looks happy instead of angry. Alright.
Hi, it's Leon! Congratulations, Leon. How cheerful! You finished your first trial! Yay! So proud of you. <laughs> Uh oh, looks like you got it right on the money. God, that, that scared the shit out of me. I just saw uh oh, and fuck you, Monokuma. The blacken in this case, the one that killed Sayaka, was none other than Leon Kawada. Huh? Hey, hold on. Uh, hold on a second. L Leon. Leon, did you really kill Sayaka? We just determined this. Yeah, you just determined this. I, I don't believe it. You son of a bitch. Excuse me, sir. Son of a bitch. What the fuck is wrong with you? I, I didn't have a choice. You did. Okay. One thing about this trial. He did have a choice to kill. To not kill Sayaka. Yeah. He could have just gone back in his room. Locked the door. Come back the next morning. Hey guys, Sayaka tried to kill me. Yeah, like at that point, oh, I can think of a motive as to why she would try to kill him specifically. He said he wanted to be a musician. He said he wanted to be a star. That is a good point. So, out of anyone that she would choose to lure in and try to kill, it would be someone that she sees as competition. That's an interesting theory too. I never heard that one. That's pretty good. Wait, hey, but. What I'm trying to say is also, like, yeah, Leon did not need to kill Sayaka. Yeah. I don't like, know why he did. Like, he... Self-defense isn't really that justifiable of a reason, even, like, a real court of Like, at least not in this... At least not in this scenario, it's definitely not. Right. Because it's like, you know that you're going to have to hide it. You know you're not going to be able to explain it as just being self-defense. Exactly. And then everyone knows to keep an eye on Sayaka. Yeah. He shouldn't have just, he shouldn't have kept going with the murder in, in the first place. He should have just been like, I'm gonna go back to my room now. Like, once you had blocked that first attack. At the very least, he could have, like, just tried to knock her unconscious. Yeah, like, once, once she had gone into the room, that could have been it. He could have just left. And plus, like, he broke her wrist. Mm-hmm. Like, he had so many ways that he could have avoided not killing her. Just hitting both of her wrists, breaking both of her wrists, making sure she couldn't get a weapon, and then zoom out. Also, how... How lame it is to be like, oh, you're in the bathroom? Hang on, stay right there, let me get my toolkit, I'll be right back, and then just go get your toolkit and come back and finish the job? Yeah. So There's he, so was, many ways in this this whole scenario he could just been like, and, never mind. Like, if he was just carrying the, cool, the toolkit on him, why was he carrying it on him? Exactly. Like, that means he was expecting to have to use it for something. So. So, yes, our dear assistant Sayaka Maizono tried to be the first black end in the game, but it backfired. Now she's dead, and it's Leon's fault. Yep. Yeah, I, I think that would be, like, a valid reason for picking him out of everyone. Yeah. Is because he wanted to be a star. She viewed that as competition. Let's keep going. As opposed to anyone else. So that's why... I killed her first, sorry. None of you are any different. One wrong step and you'd be the one standing here. No, we wouldn't. Yeah. It was complete chance that I wound up like this. I was just <laughs> unlucky. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, come on! You expect me to just accept my death? Well, you're gonna have to now. You're gonna have to now. Everything's become clear. The decision was made right after all. Why are you all staring at me? No, the decision we made was right after all. But when I think about that, honestly, I better be off if we've been wrong. No, we'd all be dead. Because if what we came up with is really the truth, then the truth is that Sayaka was trying to frame me. That's also fucked up. <laughs> yeah, lie. all but of it's fucked up. Even if that's true, I can't say she was wrong. After all, the mastermind. It's all because of that video. Even I couldn't handle what I saw in there. If, if I was here and the video actually had something to do with me, I can't even imagine. Now we're trapped in. He now we're trapped here with no way out. They're probably waiting for me. What? 
I can't afford to be stuck in here. In all actuality, while you have a good theory, that's why she did the killing. To get out and be with her friends and her family again. Yeah. I just think, like, their reason for choosing him specifically. Oh. Probably. Because, like, it could have been anyone. It really could have been. But I feel like the reason she chose him specifically could have been viewing him as competition. Possibly. I do like that idea. That's a, re that's a really un a unique one, I'd say. The one thing that was more important to her than anything else. Her dreams, her friends. To have, seen, to have to see something like that happen to them. It's Ayaka. I... I did whatever it took to reach that dream. I mean it. Even some things that weren't so pleasant. That's why Sayaka, for the friends that meant so much to her, that's why she betrayed me. So when she said, No matter what happens, please always be there for me. I need you on my side. <laughs> she was lying to me from the very beginning. She was using me. Is that why she talked to me in the first place? I, I guess I'll never know. Because there's nothing I can do to ask what she, what she was thinking. Once you're dead, that's that. <laughs> Boy howdy, the entertainment industry must sure be terrifying, huh? I mean to try and kill someone just because of those relationships. Ba -bum, ba -bum. She seems so nice and lovely on the outside, but inside, she descended into pure madness. What did you say? Phew. I understand. Really, I do. Yup, yup. You're in utter despair thanks to Sayaka's betrayal, right? Compassion, intimacy, love. The stronger those feelings, the stronger the despair when they collapse. Stop screwing with us. This is all your fault. This case is bl has blown my mind. Like, th this entire thing. That's just chapter one. Oh boy. Sayaka being forced to do something like that? All of it. Everything. It's all your fault! Suddenly, in a frenzy, I lunged at Monokuma. Don't fucking do that! We just saw Junko! Also, we tried to do this before, and you failed miserably. <laughs> but... Also, Mondo tried to do it, and he nearly exploded. That's enough. As angry as I was, Kyoko lashed onto my arm without hesitation. Her grip was like iron. Strong enough, I was sure it would leave a bruise. Calm down. If you really want to make her enemies pay for what they've done, you need to let it go for now. Damn it! Ba -bum, ba -bum. Oh, that was a close one. I thought for sure you were going to give me a good walloping. Just barely avoided punishment, you did. Yes, indeed. Now then, since you so magnificently revealed the identity of the killer during the class trial, the blackened Leon Kuwata will receive his punishment. I've been waiting for this. Mm -hmm. Pun punishment? You mean execution? Wait a yeah. second! I didn't have a choice! I had to kill her! Yeah, that's it. I was just protecting myself in the heat of the moment! It was self-defense! Yeah, he didn't sound so sure of himself there. Yeah. How exactly was it self-defense? Hmm. When you forced your way into the bathroom, did you or did you not use your very own toolkit? After she'd shut herself into the bathroom, you went out of your way to head back to your own room. Then you came all the way back, broke into the bathroom, and killed her. Am I wrong? Do you understand? You had any number of chances to stop what you were doing. Thank you, Celeste. But you chose not to if not because you had an unclouded intent to commit murder. So, that's why... No, no! That's not... Stop it. I've had enough of this. Oh. Are you sure? You were closer to her than anyone, were you not? He killed your precious Sayaka. Do you understand? I can't say Leon is solely to blame. Of course, I don't plan on blaming Sayaka either. Because... Because the one to blame is him! Huh? Okay. Huh? If it weren't for you, this never would have happened to Sayaka or Leon. We shouldn't be fighting each other. We should be fighting against the one who put us in this situation. The mastermind. Unbelievable. 
Oh, did you awaken to your sense of justice? Hey, um... Well, it just so happens that there's nothing more than unethical... There's nothing more unethical than an unwavering sense of justice. Uh oh, poor, poor Taka's about to get offended. Mm-hmm. After all, it's people with that sort of mentality that perpetuate war all over the world. Hmm. Isn't that the kind of justice that's awakened within you? I feel like we're getting... Just shut up. I feel like we're getting some social commentary here. Yeah. Okay, well, anyway, more importantly... Kills, kills, kills. Uh, let's hurry up and get to what everyone's been waiting for. It's been 7, 57 minutes of the video. It's time for the punishment. Yes. I'm begging you, please, don't do this. How dickish would it be if we left the episode off here? <laughs> I'm not, I'm, I have half a mind to do that. Come on now. No more begging. No more excuses. You must pay the penalty for breaking the rules. Society demands it. Stop, please. What society? There's like 12 of us here. Now then, I've prepared a very special punishment. For Leon Kawana, the ultimate baseball star. No, 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 no. Let's give it He's... everything we've got. Yay! He sounds so despaired. No! Okay, don't go any further. Let me set the scene real quick. Execution time. Oh boy. Go ahead. <sighs> Let's see. Oh, 3D. Oh yeah. Man yeah, has been found guilty. Time for the punishment. Oh god! <laughs> God! Jesus Christ! Give it oh a sec. no! Oh no! The one thousand blows. Jesus Christ! Man, you're missing out. Oh my god, I haven't seen this execution in a long time. That's your god. You've got me nothing but mulch now. Good God! I didn't know baseballs could be that gruesome. Shit! What we saw. Eh, oh, I'm sorry. That was the true face of despair. That was the true face of despair. Jesus. Said by me, Makoto Nayagi. Jesus Christ! Okay, hang on. We're gonna end that right there. Okay. It's been it's almost, it's been an hour now. Yeah. I feel like this is a good enough place to save. Okay. What'd you think? Uh I didn't I, I legitimately did not know baseballs could be that brutal. <laughs> like, I legitimately had no suspicions about Leon. Right. Like I had no suspicions at all. Because I don't know, he just didn't really send off any alarm bells for me. Because, like, he wasn't doing anything, like, particularly suspicious. Mm hmm And, like, I think it was because Sayaka did all this suspicious shit that... Yeah. Like, it threw me off. Like, that one was... That wasn't a little bit of a doozy with the logic. So, we're pretty much done with this episode of Danganronpa. Um, I wanted to read off something for you before we go. So, as you saw, when the Blackened gets found out, they have their own unique execution that's relative to their ultimate talent. 
Right. So, what happened? I think this was a fan made. They're fan made theories, or I don't know if it was like developer made. But basically, there are executions based on the other characters, the characters that get or the that are victims. Each of them have their own uh, executions as well. So before we left, I want to read off Sayaka Mizono's final performance. Sayaka is placed on a stage that's shaped like a giant man trap, along its edge, complete with a meter to score her. She is required to sing in order to fill the meter until it's full. If she can fill the meter, she gets, she basically gets to go scot free. However, just as the meter is about to reach the highest score, Monokuma destroys it, triggering the failure condition. This causes the trap to slam shut, killing Sayaka instantly. And like, it would have been really interesting to see a Sayaka execution. Yeah, but... Like, I, I understand, like, you can't really have branching paths too easily in games like this, though. Mm -hmm. But I, I do think it would be cool. Yeah, oh yeah, that, that would be... It would definitely help with the replayability to have those extra paths, but I understand why they didn't. This is already such a complex game on its own. Yeah. And you see how well they write their scripts. <laughs> so average. Average people. Average average life. Average, average, is average, average. as average does. So, anyway, guys, that's about it for this episode. Thank you for sticking around with us. I know it's been over an hour, but we do appreciate you guys being here. If you're still here, give us a like. Yeah. And go ahead and subscribe. Share this video with others. Um... And go ahead and subscribe to Lizzie Nopo. The episode uh, that's going to come up next will be on her channel. Yep. So you don't want to miss that. And thank you guys so much for watching. This is the end of chapter one. We made it. And this concludes our first class trial. Oh, uh, what do you think of the game so far? I'm I'm really enjoying it. I don't want I don't want to stop recording it now. <laughs> we kind of have to though. It's I know. pretty late for us. But I mean, you for you guys, you'll see it pretty soon. Thank you guys so much for watching. Take care of yourself, please. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. And stay away from baseballs for a little while. <laughs> <laughs>